this is where my journey today begins at the Cookmere Mirandarins where I was in the uh, first kite video um, you just saw my view from this point at the moment out to the sea um, looking down into the Cookmere Haven and I'm now going to take a walk up this path and kick into the woods over there So my kit is actually pretty lightweight, definitely for, for me really, even just for an overnighter. Um, but then I've got extra kit for reviews, for testing. I've also got uh, four water bottles, four litres. With that, I've also got the 12 volt battery for filming, the Pelican case for the camera, the tripod. This all adds to my weight, and what end, what started off being uh, a lightweight trip, can end up being quite uh, heavy and bulky. But I've been doing this a few years now, more than used to it. I've just got a better surroundings to do it in. So I've just made it in the woods. I believe I'm on one of these cycle tracks. Um, it is a footpath as well, but I believe this is one of the dedicated bike tracks in the woods. Pretty much uh, five or six of those. They're just the ones that are marked down. So pretty thick or dense woodland. It's English maple, sycamore, beech, and a few ash trees dotted around. Here I'm still by the road, but I shall. Uh, Take a sharp left in a minute and you'll see the kind of hill I've got to contend with. So, give that way a miss. It's a slope that is nigh on vertical. And I've seen only a handful of mountain bikers go down it. It's a bit dangerous. Even in mountain biking uh, terms. I'm going to carry on down here and I've got probably about 2-3k journey I didn't even bother with the map this time pretty much know the layout of the woods plus I've got mapping software on my phone 12 volt battery gives me means to charge my phone I also have a spare battery for my phone so uh, using my phone doesn't matter and my phone is very reliable and in case you're wondering software I use is ViewRanger GPS and I've got the uh, pro version it's the full paid for um, you download maps you download grids off the maps and uh, it's fantastic but software what's good about it is it's got buddy trackers um, kind of a bit like the spot location device um, you can send OK signals back with it pinpoint your location with it um, and I reckon it's pretty damn good down to well within 5 metres square and um, sometimes even better than that that's my opinion um, on my phone so, uh, there's many opinions from many people. So I've just hit a path, or a track actually, it's the work entrance to, um, for work access, vehicular access, to the old sewer works building, 
which I believe they're doing work on, or in and around the area anyway. Sorry about the sun. It's better. So, you may be wondering why the red pack. I've also got trekking poles. Kind of serves two purposes here. One, you blend in with the locals. Um, army rucksacks stand out a mile. Um, it's not good to stand out. Um, you also mix in with tourists. And although you can get a bit of uh, snubbery around, around you, um, it's better to deal with that than uh, having to deal with anything else. Although it is a very friendly place. Maybe just laying back to my cautious days of where I used to live. Trekking poles then serve many purposes. On uphill treks, um, they help with my knees. They also are going to be part of my shelter system, depending on where I find camp. And are very handy to hang stuff off and uh, stuff like that. Just to show you the view. So there's another track through there. It runs up and we join onto this one. the path I'm on. Nice steep drop-ins for mountain bikes. Lovely bit of woodland. So I've just snuck down this path. Look carefully. The field is absolutely full of rabbits. There's a few buzzards around. And the magpie don't help, giving the alarm call. So I've just got to one of the high points, which I believe is Snap Hill. They are the woodlands that I am heading to, which means I have a steep downhill walk. <laughs> so I've been walking a few hours now. It's quite tiring, up, down, up, down, up, down. I've still got about another K to go to where I want to go to camp. And it's now 6 p.m. Loads of places to camp. It's just someone to get to a certain area. Plus it's a good walk in. And I get to see what potential Plants, trees, shrubs, and what the potential are for all the seasons around here. And uh, obviously a lot of campsites that can be used. So finally got here. Just had a quick scout around. See if anyone had been here, which they haven't. We've got a shelter that's being built here, which I'll take you to see tomorrow. At the moment, let's just give you a 360. Got this nice flat area. All the way along here. Big drop down there. Levels off and then drops again. 
and then an incline up that way with uh, route systems that run parallel. So uh, lots of deep ruts up there. So this is the best place. Let me get set up. So this was kind of off the whim, building a shelter. I'm not quite sure whether it's going to hammer it down or not. It's basically an open front teepee. As I am going to be sleeping on the floor, I want as much room as possible. And uh, although Someone beat me to it. This is the DD Coyote Brown 3 metre by 3 metre tarp. It's a lovely brown colour and uh, really blends in well to this environment. Glad they finally started to listen to uh, what we want. So for cooking then, I've just bought my MSR pocket rocket, um, gas canister, the tri folding tripod for the jet ball, flint and steel, or fire steel, and a saw blade. And then just titanium pot. Just wanted to go lightweight. Obviously you can go even more lightweight with ditching the stove, but I don't want to keep lighting fires in these woods when uh, there's no need. So for sleeping on then, I've got my X-Bed um, Simmat Ultralight Medium and the Schnozzle Pump Bag, which is basically a dry bag, images are out now, um, with the Schnozzle Valve on. This just pumps up the mat without having to breathe into it and put moisture into it and uh, obviously makes the insulation damp and uh, if you pack it away damp it can rot mildew um, mold you know it just avoids all that so uh, let me just show you how I pump this up so first of all then keep the valve end up this end roll it out and then open it Then we want to locate the inflate valve, which is the one with the tag on. Pop that open. Fit the inflate valve straight over the top. And 
Now you want to get some air in this, roll down the top, and push it in. Now it does depend on how firm you like it, but it's normally two full sackfuls. Obviously I've done a small one first. I like mine quite firm. So it's got a one way valve to stop the air from coming out. And uh, there you go. Turn it over and it's ready to lay on. So for food then, I'm going to have a freeze dried chicken tikka masala with rice. It's the fusion freeze dried food. And just seeing how much water, it's 310 mil. There's no fill line inside, um, which is um, quite a downside um, really. But luckily on my bottle, um, I finished this on the way up. It has gradients on side and uh, 300 and in between 350. I'm going to go for a little bit more water, can't hurt. So, I'm going to give you a before and after. I've actually had this one before and it is lovely. So, before, lovely chunks of chicken in there. We lost it. That would not have been good. So I'm just going to open up the base, place it down. Now I'm going to measure the hot water into my One thing with titanium, you can't grab the handle until it's cooled down. So I'm going to go for that. Made the old water bottle a bit flimsy. <laughs> we'll let that cool down then. Plenty of water for a brew in a minute. The smell is absolutely amazing. <laughs> you don't get it from many freeze dried food packets, I can tell you. And I've definitely tasted my fair share. So, zip that shut. Just stand this bottle up. Cool, I'm going to put it in my cosy, even though it is very warm out. Um, this does make a difference. So, I'm going to sit that up against the tripod. So, as you know, I'm not normally one for sleeping on the floor. I've never really found that um, mat, whether it's inflatable or foam, that will uh, do the job keeping me comfortable. Now, I've slept on this three times. This will be my fourth night and other than having a pillow, I couldn't really fault it. Um, and obviously Innovation's 2x bed kit, like the chair kit I've got on the mat now. Just means I can be comfortable in camp. And uh, I've had my fair share of uh, sit mats and 
stools and chairs and um, fold up chairs, the pocket chair. Um, there's a couple of people that have seen that. Um, it's heavy, um, it's certainly not pocket size, and uh, you know, it's just not, not cutting the mustard, shall we say. Um, I'll put all the specs of the um, chair kit down in the description box. Um, the weight, I mean, it is fairly weighty. Um, it's a total slip, um, so it totally encases my mat with a full um, clamshell opening at the end, two zips. It's got four rods, or two, two or four rods, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, I literally just wiped my mat and folded it all up how I knew I had to do it and uh, sat on it. Um, it's really, really comfortable. And you've got these little um, straps with buckles, looking buckles. So you can tighten or loosen it. Depends on how you like lounging. Found it really comfortable. And uh, it's something that I think people always forget about. It's, uh, it's nice to go lightweight. It's certainly uh, helpful if you do. You're able to walk further, enjoy it more. Um, than being bogged down with loads of gear and uh, shoulders hurt, back hurt, um, legs hurt and whatever else. Um, but you've got to think about being comfortable when you get there and maybe doing it in the most lightweight way you can. And uh, this is certainly going to be my method from now on. Um, even if I'm going to sleep in the hammock, this pad is actually really good for sleeping in a hammock. Um, and I have a chair. So it'd be fantastic for that. Um, food. So I've just been playing around with the tarp a little bit. Um, still got a little bit of tweaking. The uh, breeze was coming from the opposite side so I needed the breeze to come in under the tarp to uh, help blow these mozzies away. Um, hopefully they won't hang around too long. So checked on the food earlier, should be done about now. So I just got the long fork, uh, spoon, sorry, that Jet Boil makes. It's a brand to say I'm actually unfortunately lost um, due to a change in supplier. So, let's get a look in here. It's a bit dark. Uh, it's very curry-like. Um, I mean, you can add less water if you like it thick. I quite like mine uh, runny. In fact, I've actually got no choice at the moment, but uh, maybe a little tad too much water. Not sure. But to uh, see that sort of food with the chicken totally hydrated is fantastic. So I when I pack my gear I always try and keep the same stuff with me um, no matter when or where I'm going um, it's just so handy to have and uh, I brought along the Fossil's pet bowls now this is like I say the pet one it's actually ideal for me um, you get two bowls but I've just poured that food in so you can see it Really nice food there. So, really easy to put together. Look there now. Um, it's a snap button 
thing. It can get clogged up with food, um, it does need washing. Um, same with anything you take out, it all needs washing up. Um, this folds flat and you can just splash on hot water and uh, that works to clean it, so uh, it's an easier way. Same with the cup, um, just easy. And uh, folds flat, doesn't take up loads of room. So I'm going to enjoy my food. <laughs>